الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله from the Quranic dua that the believers should be aware of because this is uh, dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for pure and complete success. Pure and complete success. And that is the dua asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for good in this life as well as the hereafter. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina dhab al nar. O our Lord, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. Give us good in this life as well as the hereafter. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina dhab al nar. So, give us good in this life as well as the hereafter or give us good in the hereafter and protect us from the fire. In this dua of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning that it comes from Kitab Kitabillah we see the importance of asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for good in this life as well as the hereafter. And that we should not strive and put all of our efforts and our energy into just accumulating and piling up and only trying to obtain success in this life. But rather we should be concerned about the Akhirah. Likewise, some people are to an extreme going beyond the Shar, going beyond the Had uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that they abstain from everything in this life, thinking that this is zuhd, thinking that this is asceticism, thinking that they have achieved and attained a level of piety, or that they are obtaining a level of piety by giving up everything in this dunya for the hereafter. But rather, we see the Prophet Muhammad wasallam was balanced, and he is the most knowledgeable, and the one who actualized Tawheed and the correct measurement of ibadah and pleasure in this life, he actualized it the best. And no matter how much you think you're pious, and no matter how much you think your sheikh has obtained some sort of success because he abstained from everything, that if he went beyond the bounds of the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and did things that the Prophet وسلم, didn't do as far as what is considered piety, then know and understand that what he's doing is not true piety. Because the true scale for measuring Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana fil akhirati hasana that obtaining good in this life as well as the hereafter is in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet so that means if the Prophet ﷺ did things like marriage, he enjoyed atr, he enjoyed the prayer, that means we can never abandon the prayer. That means we can never uh, abandon uh, or uh, that we can enjoy things like uh, perfumes and, and itr, you know, uh, um, the oils and the oud and the things that smell, that, that beautify and make us smell good. And it also means that the institution of marriage should not be abandoned. Don't think that you're so pious and you're going to focus on your ibadah and you're going to ob obtain the hasana by abandoning marriage. <coughs> Instead, stick with the sunnah and this is the best of balances. And obtaining success in this life is directly related to worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the person who obtains that hasana in this life, that means that their worship is based on ikhlas and it's in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So this is the true and the supreme success. And that's truly obtaining the hasana fi dunya wal akhirah. And the hasana and the akhirah is getting that reward 
So by asking Allah for good in this life as well as the hereafter, that means good, you want to be on the sunnah, and you want to do those things which please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you're following that and you're obtaining that, those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, and seeking His pleasure in this life, so that way you can gain His favor and His pleasure in the hereafter. And may Allah ta'ala bless us all with that and protect us from the nar. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.